The term cultural competency refers to the process of gaining knowledge and skill to be able to work cross-culturally. And within the context of healthcare, cultural competency can mean learning about other cultures and how other perspectives of health may bear on healthcare. It can also refer to a set of policies, for example, having translators to translate into another language. Cultural competency in practice is all about understanding cultural differences and how that can bear upon healthcare. But there's another side to cultural competency that is a little problematic, and I want to introduce that in this video. But let's back up and understand what health disparities are. In medical sociology is the study of society and health and the healthcare system as its own society. So we really investigate some of the problems and the opportunities within healthcare systems and how that relates to health outcomes. Health outcomes are ways to measure population health and population health is the health of a group of people. So a health outcome could be the prevalence of the disease. It could be another outcome such as people returning to the emergency department after surgeries. It could be things like health behaviors and how they impact populations, things like diet, smoking, and stress management. So health outcomes are how we measure health in a population. And health disparities are those differences by social factors that are due to inequalities and injustices. So they're more than just differences in health outcomes. They're differences that have roots that relate to the social and economic circumstances of people. So social factors, as a review, are things like our race, age, gender, socioeconomic status, and so health disparities are differences in health outcomes by those social groups. And they often relate to inequities and injustices and prejudices and social distance between patients and providers. So there are many different causes of health disparities and a lot of them have to do with things that happen outside hospitals and totally separate from medical care. Things like the neighborhood and what's going on at the neighborhood level. If there's crime or if it's a high stress environment. Things like the economy and people having access to education, jobs, being paid livable wages. Things in the social environment such as racism and other tension between social groups. So all of those external to the hospital aspects bear down on the health of people and they contribute to health disparities. But within the healthcare system, cultural competency is an attempt at reducing those disparities, improving the provider-patient relationship by increasing the knowledge base of health providers about other cultures, different perspectives, and social determinants of health. Now, the downside to cultural competency is that while in theory its purpose is in part to reduce those disparities and create more equity, by placing the competency in the hands of the health provider who will then become an expert on another culture in order to get people that are in the other group to comply with healthcare and things like that, it reinforces that social distance. And furthermore, it kind of has the subtext of medicine and health professionals and people in the dominant culture as being culture free or neutral. And we see this in the analysis of the culture of medicine, that there is indeed a culture in medicine. And a lot of the time, we don't really know a lot about our own culture. And what I mean by that is when you grow up in a certain culture, 
culture, it's hard to really see it until you see examples of ways of life that are different from it. And then you can start to kind of see what your culture is and what your biases are. Now, some people are more in tune with the norms and the beliefs and the values of their own culture. And again, many times that is most apparent when you have a culture clash or when you have something to compare it to. And so when we think about cultural competency and improving our knowledge about different cultural perspectives on health and healthcare and how that affects medical care, we want to add to that. And instead of placing this concept of being the expert in the hands of a health provider, a lot of folks have talked more about integrating this idea of cultural humility into the mix. Humility is that way of being where you're not placing yourself above someone else. You're not considering yourself the expert. You are teachable. You can learn. You can be self-reflective enough to think about your own biases, prejudices, your own life experiences, even your own character defaults that may be contributing to how you're interacting with someone. And being able to set that aside to truly listen to, for example, a patient and what's really going on for them and how they're perceiving their illness. And it's not so that you believe what they believe or that you have a perspective shift. That's not necessary, although that can happen. It's really more about understanding the true situation and perhaps some of the barriers between a patient and their own wellness. The more we can practice cultural humility, being able to recognize our own culture and essentially be better listeners and improve that provider-patient dynamic, the more information we can get that's going to help you guys be better health professionals. And in many cases, you can even get information having to do with some of the social determinants of health that will empower you to be able to make referrals, whether there is maybe a need for housing or mental health care or drug and alcohol treatment and these types of things. Now, there are a lot of conflated terms. There's culture, there's cultural competency, there's cultural humility, there's social determinants, and they all refer to different things. But what we wanna take away from this conversation is that cultural competency is about becoming more knowledgeable and having greater skill and appreciation for diversity and other cultures. Cultural humility is more about an approach that really enables you to put your own self and agenda to the side and really be a little more teachable. Social determinants are aspects that are affecting our health at the community or the societal level. Things like housing, education, employment, racism, and other relations among different groups. And culture in and of itself is really a way of life. And that includes a perspective on health and wellness. And when we as educators like myself or health professionals or really anyone in a people serving occupation can integrate cultural humility and also the practice of empathy and compassion, then the goal shifts from being an expert on another culture in order to address any discrepancies that may affect someone's health care to the goal being improving the provider-patient relationship. And when the goal gets shifted to the relationship and the environment that's happening at the healthcare organization or at the school or at any workplace or home environment even, it shifts that focus to creating an environment that's going to elicit the most information, the most honest answers, and the most 
ability to connect people with the resources that they need. After decades of cultural competency being integrated into healthcare practice and policy, we still see severe health disparities. And that doesn't tell us that cultural competency programming and trainings are not effective. There are trainings that are definitely effective, but it suggests that within healthcare, there's really more to the story than just a lack of knowledge on the part of a provider or on the part of a patient when it comes to their well being. There's more to the story. It has to do with psychosocial factors. It has to do with things that happen outside the hospital that's not necessarily under the purview, under the job of a health provider. And it has to do with our relationships and how we come off to one another. And so moving forward, improving population health, being able to evolve this concept of cultural competency to include humility, empathy, and compassion. This takes us into the next phase of health and health care, where it's not just about diagnosing and treating. It's not just about analyzing these differences and disparities. And it's not just about knowledge or even resources, but it becomes more of a holistic approach that's about relationships, it's about connection, and it's about fostering that self-esteem and self-awareness across groups, across cultures, across organizations and sectors of society to really create a true healing environment for everyone.